Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of IBD Heal, a podcast brought to you by High Carb Health. I'm your host, Shakul, and today we are joined by Dr. Ben Benillis. Welcome to the show. Oh, great to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Just give you a quick introduction uh, on who Dr. Ben is. Dr. Benjamin Bernoulis is the author of the book, Create Health, Reverse Autoimmune Disease Without Drugs or Their Side Effects. People with autoimmune disease work with Dr. Ben, there it is, to conquer their condition once and for all. Because most are sick of dealing with chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and medications that just give them side effects. I hear you, man. He helps them learn the tools to get out of pain, get their vitality back, and feel like a normal person again. Bottom line... You reclaim control of your body instead of it controlling you, 100%. So what we want to talk about today, Ben, is first of all, just starting off with your own personal journey of uh, healing yourself and uh, how all that happened for you, how you kind of navigated your way around the medical system and then finally came to find out the truth about health and, and kind of take control of it for yourself. All right, sure. So where where do you want me to start? Start from wherever you want, man. The beginning is a good place. <laughs> Where when when okay. we first started to get, you know, symptoms and how they kind of manifested for you and how it kind of went from there. Yeah, I guess I guess I asked that question because it was kind of a slow. Like I'm not quite sure when it started, mm. um, but like I can I think it was like when it really got bad was like 2010. I think that like that year was when I really started to notice like this is more than just like not feeling so great. Um, and so that was, that was kind of like the, the culmination of or the, the beginning of the health journey was I, I would, um, I think the first thing I really noticed was that my digestion got really bad, mm-hmm. that, uh, every meal I ate was causing me pain. Some of them like a lot of pain. And, um, and, uh, I started to notice that like I was really fatigued all the time, really relying on the caffeine energy drinks things like that, um, started to notice just like a kind of just a chronic soreness, a chronic like ache in my body, my muscles. Um, and then just really started to notice that like I, um, my cognition, my mental capacity was starting to decline. And I was working as, as an engineer in in the microchip industry. And, um, I was like one of the top performers at the company. And it was like, slowly things just kind of started falling off and I found it harder and harder to like keep up with the work that I had and like do a good job. And Mm. meanwhile, having all these, you know, digestive issues and just like, you know, like in the beginning joking, like, Oh, I'm going to feel this one. Right. But then it it became like every meal. Um, And so at some point I kind of realized like, okay, maybe this is, maybe this is worth going to the doctor for. Um, and, you know, I was kind of hesitant to do that. It's just sort of like, oh, uh, you don't want to like acknowledge that something's wrong, but eventually it kind of gets to a boiling point. Hmm. And so I did thinking like, okay, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to talk about, you know, this fatigue that I have, this, this like muscle pain that I have, this, all these digestive issues that I have. Um, and, uh, and I didn't really realize that like put them together is all related. I just, I just knew like something was off. And I'm um, thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm going to come in there with this list of symptoms, A, B, and C, and then they're going to diagnose me and run the lab tests or do whatever they do and say, okay, we'll take drugs X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, um, X cures A, Y cures B, and Z cures C, and then you just, you'll be good to go. And um, turns out it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work that way. <laughs> doesn't work that way. Um, you know, I mean, first off, they got to, they got to actually figure out what's wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Uh and they, that, 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 I mean, that's kind of where they, they failed, um, because they, they couldn't even diagnose anything. Like they would just say, well, it doesn't sound like anything particular, you know, we'll run some lab tests. Oh, you know, everything came back normal. So I guess you're fine. Right. it's like, that's not yeah. the answer I was coming here for. I was expecting you to fix the problem, not just like bill my insurance for a bunch of like diagnostic <laughs> things that tell me nothing's wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, okay, well then let's refer you to the specialist. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna Ooh, go to yeah. the specialist. I'm gonna go to the GI doctor. I'm gonna go to the mm-hmm. endocrinologist. The, you know, I'm gonna go to the whatever, and they're gonna they're smarter. They know this stuff better, right? And then that ends up being a dead end because they run their own tests and they go, oh yeah, I can't figure anything out. What's wrong with you, right? And I remember asking, you know, by the time I'm on like my third or fourth GI doc, I'm like, 
you know, is there something that I'm eating that maybe has something to do with it? Oh, no, definitely not. Definitely not that. And we don't know what it is. And, you know, it's like, just take these over the counter medications and like, you know, and that was when things started clicking. It was like, people are just passing the buck. Like, you know, I, I, I point out something that's like, could be related and get like completely dismissed. And it was just like, I, I was starting to smell that something like people weren't really doing their job. And, um, or like, or they're just um, like, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I guess they're doing their job, all, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're doing their job. They're doing what they were supposed to do. Right. But I was just sort of like, like, you know, the whole time they've been like, oh, they're going to fix it. They're the doctors. They know <laughs> yeah. everything is good. I just got to do what they say. And it was like after the third or fourth specialist and after like just getting the runaround so many times and, and getting no answers. It, like it took that much like in retrospect mm. it's like i should have noticed something was off from the beginning right yeah, yeah. Um, but it took a while of them just kind of screwing it up and like fumbling the ball for me to find like maybe these guys don't know everything right um and so that's when i started just like looking into things on my own you know i was like hey i've got a science background like you know these doctors aren't too much of a help maybe this is some rare thing that they've never heard of you know, mm. I'll, I'll look into it myself. Mm. And, um, you know, it was around 2010. And um, so I start coming across information, like searching these things like, well, you know, like digestive issues often have to do with the food that you eat. And it's like, oh, yeah, mm. I thought no. I was right about that. <laughs> now it's like anybody watching this podcast, you know, you talk about IBD health. It's like they obviously know this. Right. Yeah. And it makes sense. I mean, it's like you, you, what is your what is your intestines your digestive system i mean all the way from the mouth to the to the outhole is a series of tubes right as the, as john mccain said a series of tubes um where basically it's it's um you know things that you eat flow through this tube and they're actually the only things that go through this tube nothing else goes through this tube and it's the inside of that tube that's diseased inflamed and and um having a problem and um and 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 the only thing that touches is the food, but yet they say the food is the only thing that touches the inside of this tube that's diseased and inflamed has nothing to do with why the tube is diseased <laughs> and inflamed. Like it's 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 just sort of like you you go <sighs> along with it for a while because they have so much authority, but then you just like this is just well, really not passed the sniff test. How did you say that, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like yeah. it's it, it it's it's like. You know, I mean, um, that's a really good point, yeah. though, because, you know, you mentioned before that, you know, you were going to the doctors and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with you. At the end of the day, they don't actually know what's wrong with anyone. They're only dealing with yeah. symptoms, right? So the well, fact they know that, what's their... I mean, yeah, I mean, okay, but, you know, the root cause of what causes the disease, they're only looking yeah. at the symptom and trying to, trying to figure out how you're going to get some symptom relief, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, at the end of the day, they're not really interested in dealing with what actually caused the problem in the first place. And that's why you sure. kind of got bounced around everywhere because they're trying to figure out what your symptoms are and diagnose your symptoms for some kind of name that they, they're they going to give it. And then, you know, so they, they can give you this drug to relieve those symptoms and then put you on that conveyor belt for the rest of your life. Can we can we kind of jump <laughs> topics and just talk about how this ties into the kind of the medical freedom thing? Is that cool? Yeah, or are we yeah, say that later? yeah. I mean, we can. I we just can feel jump like around, it's man. like the, the the food thing of like the food doesn't affect <clears throat> the digestion, like blinders in the eyes is like the same idea that like putting a piece of you know cloth over your face is going to stop a respiratory <laughs> virus. It's just like it's just like patent absurdity, but like people want to play along because it's just like it's just like easier to just follow the rules than to actually like think critically and step outside and say, Oh, you know what? Like maybe you're wrong, you know, doctor guy. Mm. Um, and so, so it was like, you know, they don't want to have the confrontation. Right. So, I mean, and that's basically, I didn't want to have the confrontation. So it was like, I read more into this stuff and I was like, you know, diet can make a difference. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Right. But eventually after like, going through the motions over and over again, going to the next visit, going to the next guy, you know, this will refer you to the, this specialist, you know, and just still getting no help. Eventually you're like, okay, like enough of this game, enough of this, this is not working. I got to figure this out. Right. Um, and so that's when I started like 
like looking into eating healthier. And, and like at the time I didn't, like I knew like what, what, like a vegan diet was. I mean, I guess I knew that you didn't eat animal products. Um, and I knew that they were people that were like very, you know, um, evangelical and obnoxious and preachy. Um, but I, I, I really wasn't looking into like, what's, what diet should I follow? It was like, I just want to eat foods that don't hurt my stomach. Okay. Um, and so it was literally, and I was living on like a microwave diet, right? Like I was just eating the, getting the microwave food from the grocery store. Cause I didn't want to cook, didn't want to learn how to cook. Um, didn't want to put in the effort to do it and I'll just microwave them and eat them. And then I would eat, you know, fast food and eat takeout food and really didn't make any of my own food other than like processed, highly refined stuff. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, you know, I don't want to get good at this cooking thing, right? Cause that's, that's like, I don't want to invest so much time in that. Cause that just seems like horrible. It seems awful. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to make smoothies cause that's a lot <laughs> like a microwave, right? It's like yeah. you take the fruits, the real fast the food. food. Yeah, the real fast food. Open up the, the door to the machine, <clears throat> you throw the food inside the machine, you close the door, you push a button, you wait a little while, and then you, then the food's ready, right? And I was like, I can do that, right? It's like, you know, engineer, like hack, right? I'll just put fruits and vegetables in a blender instead of like processed food in the microwave, and it'll be the same <laughs> amount of work, but I won't, my stomach won't hurt. That's literally yeah. all I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Um, and and so like this idea, you know, any of this stuff, it was like literally like I thought I was the only guy dealing with this problem. Right. And um, and so that's what I did was I just like made smoothies out of just whatever I, produce I happen to have in the fridge, you know, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. You know, I'd be throwing like, you know, like um, an avocado and a habanero pepper and <laughs> some strawberries and like some frozen berries and a banana in there and, you know. I'm just like hoping that, you know, it's like, okay, let's, it's all blended anyway. It's, that's what's going to happen in my stomach. So might as well just like knock it back. And, you know, some of them tasted pretty good. Some of them were kind of gross. And so I was doing this for, I don't know, maybe a month or two. And I thought like, oh, you know, I should, and I was still eating like a bunch of crap too, but I was felt better. I noticed I felt better when I drank the smoothies. And um, I was like, maybe I should look up a recipe like on the internet, of, like how to make a smoothie. <laughs> You know, it's like, I would never want to look at a recipe of like how to cook a meal, but like, you know, just some ideas of things to combo together that would taste good. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that's when I looked up, went on YouTube and, um, typed in smoothie recipe and just fell down like an enormous rabbit hole. Like I was <laughs> not prepared for like what I, I came across, but I, I, I stumbled upon this guy. I think his YouTube actually just got deleted not too long ago, unfortunately, um, but Dan McDonald, the life regenerator. And, um, and he was like, he was making smoothies, but he was also doing this juicing thing where you just have like a pile of vegetables. He would throw in a juicer. And, and, um, I thought he was, he was like crazy, but entertaining. Like I was watching it for like entertainment value, like kind of laugh at him. Um, <laughs> but, uh, over time it's like, kept watching the videos, kept making more sense, kept feeling better when I was eating more fruits and vegetables, eating more smoothies, ended up buying a juicer. You know, because I thought it just made it look cool. And um, the more I was doing it, the more I was like feeling good. And eventually I just got kind of just sucked into it and um, and got this education on, you know, raw foods, plant based nutrition. Just just kind of it just kind of became a hobby. It just became fun. And I like the, the more I did, the better I felt. And um, and that was kind of that was the genesis of it. I think, um, you know, there were some tweaks along the way, you know, eventually like you know, um, got, you know, just cut out more and more of the bad stuff until I was like all plant-based, all vegan. And then I was all raw vegan for like several years and, and, and like experienced like complete remission of all symptoms felt better than I felt in my entire life. Um, and just got real, just real, real stoked on it. Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing. Yeah. We kind of, obviously we kind of went through something similar. We found David Klein, um, who's along a similar role, but, um, you know, uh, yeah. And then went no, mostly raw and, uh, yeah. Sham's, you know, education free for 10 years now. So, uh, loving awesome. life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so talk about what, um, you know, your, your life is like now, what your, what a day of eating would be like for you 
um, and how you kind of like navigate your way through your day? Um, so, you know, I eat pretty seasonally. So yeah. like, um, so like I, I do, I like to do like high water fruit for breakfast. And so like where I'm at, like citrus is like just coming into season. Like I have, I know several people with trees that are like just about ready to raid. So, um, like to do a lot of like grapefruit juice, orange juice in that, in that citrus season for breakfast and just like basically pick them off people's trees and then got a press juicer and just crank it out. Um, for lunch, typically like to do like a, some kind of smoothie, um, well, no matter what time of year, like bananas are always in season, right? So this is a, this was like bananas, blueberries, and I think like celery, um, Actually, it sounds really good right now, but I'll wait till, <laughs> wait till the interview's over. Um, and then for dinner, I'm usually doing some kind of salad and then maybe like some kind of like really basic like cooked plant food, like like baked potatoes in the air fryer with nothing on them. Or like, you know, I made some like split peas the other night with like celery. It's like two ingredients, literally. So like really simple, like whole food stuff. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I that's probably can, the can number of ingredients <laughs> I eat in a day is probably about seven, you know, like yeah. the most. Yeah. Um, that's a, yeah. Just keep it simple, isn't it? That's the that's the main thing. And um, yeah. Oh, but you and know, you get. Like I, I, oh, but that's that's not enough variety, Benjamin. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not very much variety in a single day, but like throughout the <laughs> months, throughout the years, you know, it's it's like yeah. <clears throat> it's like some, I think there was someone who said like simplicity at mealtime variety throughout the year I'm fine with that like I what, oh, and, and just with my digestion I mean if I combo a bunch of stuff together like it's not horrible but I notice like that it's not as good you know yeah that's true absolutely true you don't need a lot of variety I mean you look at you look at nature for all I mean, always look at nature for answers and you know there's not many um beings in the natural no world that <laughs> happening in nature yeah it's you know like one thing at a time that's the way that's yeah. the way um and uh yeah and talk about kind of how you feel compared to kind of even before you were sick now that you're living this kind of vibrant lifestyle sure i mean i guess part of the reason that i got so excited about it was because you know I, you know, I was feeling pretty bad. Like I was feeling, you know, pretty low energy, pretty like, you know, digestive issues, all the stuff I talked about. And just like, in general, just kind of like, bleh, you know, but it had been going on so long that I was kind of just used to it. And I, it was like, I kind of like, you know, I was expecting to be here, but I was living here and I thought, okay, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to get here. But I actually got to like, yeah. Here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, like I didn't realize that I basically had been feeling horrible like all this time. And now I have all this mm. energy and positivity and like I'm real excited about life. And I was like, no one told me that like, if you ate really healthy, you would like just feel happier in general. Like it was like, you know, maybe people, but like until you experience it firsthand, you're like, Oh, whoops. Like I should have been started this a long time ago. This was great. Um, Absolutely. So, so, and that's one of the, like, one of the reasons like you want to let people know, because it's like, even if they're not dealing with any particular disease condition, they can just experience more joy, be happier, you know, like um, just feel like just overall have a better experience of life. Yeah. I mean, that that's what happened to me. You know, I was, I had never been diagnosed with anything. I was on medications for a bunch of different things, but you know, according to the doctor, I was healthy. My labs are always yeah. perfect, you know? Yep um and uh but i was on three or four different medications at the age of 27 and uh yeah after what happened well, that's to me normal is, you know, now right it's that's like, normal it's normal yeah yeah that's normal it's normal, it's normal. <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah and you actually feel better than you did before you know so it's yeah. like but unless you've experienced that unless you've actually done that for a period of time and gone through that process to to improve your health to a level where you feel incredible all the time you don't know what that's like so you kind of kind of if you haven't actually gone through that you're kind of happy where you are but once you experience lots, yeah go for it um because I, I think this brings up an important point 
Mm. Um, you know, from like a spiritual standpoint, right? Yeah. It's like the, the, the I want to like just throw something at you. Maybe you've heard me talk about this, but this was a concept I learned from a guy named Dr. Donnie Epstein, this concept of, of reorganizational healing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, I was talking about, okay, I was here and I wanted to be back here, but then I got to here. Right. And and so most of like Western medicine is like restorative. You're like, let's get you back here. I was like as close as we can. Or like, let's just, you know, we don't want you to die, but we can keep you like minimally alive by like yeah. on a bunch of medications, cutting a bunch of organs out, right? Yeah. And that's restorative healing, trying to bring you back to how you were before you got sick. Mm. But thought experiment, what if the disease that you got or the injury or whatever happened that that lowered your level of health was actually happened for a reason. 100%. It was supposed to interrupt your life yep. because – you know, for whatever reason, you were living, doing something that wasn't really, you know, in congruence with your true self. And then and that disease, that opportunity is a wake up call was a was it was a, a chance to reexamine things. And, um, and and instead of restore you, reorganize you to a higher order, become this better version mm. of yourself mm. and invite you basically into a new life. Because, yeah, I mean, like after my health shifted, like, you know, a million other things, my life shifted for the better. I mean, I left a career that was like you know, just not serving me. It was like not, you know, it was good money, but it was just soul sucking. And, um, you know, I was in a relationship that wasn't really working, like moved, changed careers. Like my life just completely like changed in all these ways that at the time, some of it seemed like pretty unpleasant, but it's like all, it was all for the better. My life reorganized to a higher order. And now it's like getting sick like that was like the best thing that ever happened to me. (laughs) Yeah, got me out of yeah. a lot of things that weren't serving me. <laughs> yeah, Sham says the same thing. Um, and actually, the disease, the disease, is actually trying to tell you that, hey, you know, what you were doing before, where you were at this level, wasn't a good thing. You yeah. Know? And the disease is the body healing. You know, and if you pay attention and you change and you put the right inputs, then you're actually going to heal and get to where you were supposed to be at the, from the beginning, because the body always wants to be in health. So yep, thousand percent. And and when we've gone through, you know, this kind of segues perfectly into what we want to talk about next, which is medical freedom and and medications and how, you know, the the, the whole fear around the whole medical system. But um, when you've been through something like you've been through and what Shamiz went through, and you've experienced the depths of what you know, like Shamiz nearly got killed by the medication in the hospital. You know, like. Under the doctor's care, he dropped 30-something kilos and was going from three or four times a day to the bathroom to 40 times a day. A bloody bowel motion was in the hospital with nappies on, couldn't get out of bed, you know, like within the space of six weeks. So when you've wow. experienced that and you understand that, hey, this this thing, and then you and then you go through that and you actually escape from it and get to health, you realize that this, there's nothing in that that's actually serving you for the better. And so when you just make the certain uh, decisions to not participate in that process, you know, you need to be, and it's a, it's a fundamental human right where you can make the decision about anything that happens to your body and what medication goes in there, what kind of, or anything that goes in there. I think it's very important. And I think, you know, one of the major reasons, and you've been very vocal about this and, you know, we've been talking about this as well is that, do not let someone just fear monger you into taking something that you're not sure about and you haven't researched or looked into. And I'd like to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 um, I see what you're saying. It's like realizing like that whole process of like, um, kind of realizing like, wow, this, this medical system is not, it's really just like a kind of a, kind of like a sleight of hand, kind of like um let's pr- let's make it look like we know what we're doing you know and like use complicated language and things to put us in a position of authority but really we can't help anybody but we yeah. you know d- like like really do a good job of making it look like we do and fool most of the public into it mm. um and so once you kind of realize a- a- that that's all a sham it's like whatever else they come up with you already know like you just kind of know it's it's I, I remember I had this experience that um I, you know, I just, I kind of just got upset with the doctors, right? 
and like, just was like, I'm going to figure this out myself and then just kind of forgot about them. Yeah. And then I got better <laughs> and I kind of forgot that like I was, I just forgot about all of that. Like, I forgot that I was had invested so much time in all of that. Like I would rather not think about it. And then I remember one yeah. day um, I had this laptop bag. I carry my laptop to work every day. And um, I remember I, I had to find like some kind of like one of those, you know, USB thumb drives that uh-huh. had some file on it that I needed. And I, it was somewhere in my laptop bag. And I started like opening up zipper compartments in the laptop bag. And I opened up this one zipper compartment and there was just like, a pile of these like single use Pepto Bismol tablets, like, like literally like 30 of them, just like in this one that I hadn't touched that in like six months. (laughs) Yeah. And I'd forgotten that they were there. And I forgot that I used to take them every day. Yeah. Like it was just, I kept a ton of them in my bag because I was going through them like candy. Yeah. And then, and then I forgot about that. And then I opened up the, and I'm like, wow, I haven't used any medication in six, like, how long has it been? I don't even remember. Um, And it was like, oh, yeah, that whole, that whole medical, those drugs and all, that's pretty obsolete now that I just eat fruits Mm. and vegetables. Yeah. Like, that's, well, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, it's, it's sort of like, um, that was an aha moment for me, you know, And, and, and just sort of realizing that it's essentially an elaborate sham you know, mm. this, this medical system, mm. um, for the most part, I mean, obviously there's some value to like acute care and you get oh, injured in a car. Accident. I'm talking about chronic illness. Yeah. 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 When it comes to chronic illness, forget about it. You know? Yeah. Um, it's like, you, yeah, your, your odds are way better off in a grocery store than a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. so I mean, uh, I mean, if uh, anyone uh, watching or listening to this, if you're in an emergency, don't try and try and be a hero, but you know, like yeah. if you actually want to get your health back, you're not going to find that. At the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they'll say, oh, Dr. Ben doesn't believe in science. You know, what if someone has pneumonia and all this? It's like, that's not what we're talking about. No. (laughs) Um, But anyway, it was like, so, you know, when this whole like, you know, COVID thing happened, it was kind of like, okay, like this is, you know, and and you'd see like morbidly obese people walking around with masks on. And it's like, really we're going to pretend that that's doing something like this is like such an obvious like emperors has no clothes thing but like people are they're really good at scaring you right so everyone wants to go along with it like i know this is silly to like do this thing where we touch elbows and we stay like two meters apart and we you know like put on this face wrapper and like you know say our hail fauci's every night before we go to bed and it's like you know, no, but the, the touching elbows never made sense to me because I told you to sneeze into your elbow, right? And then why yeah. would you why would you touch the part that you you know if if they, you believe in that like you know? Am I missing something? Uh, he, and here's the thing, man. It's like it's almost like it's not supposed to make sense. <laughs> it's supposed to, it's supposed to be absurd, and then you go along with it, and what happens is it breaks your will, it mm. breaks your sense of self, it breaks your sense of like well, I've just gone on with all this stupid shit and like, um, I just, I'm going to keep going. And like, it, it destroys your own sense of like what's right and what's wrong and what's true and what's false. Mm. Cause you know, like subconsciously, you know, it's all, it's all a sham, but they put so much fear into you. It's like, Oh, you're going to speak out about this. No, you're not, you know, cause the, the, the herd's going to trample you. So, mm. um, it, I almost feel like it's, it's absurd on purpose. So like basically break down people's will so that eventually they just go along with everything, hmm. you know? Um, yeah. I know that's a little dark, but I mean like, you know, cause otherwise it would like actually make sense, you know? Um, and that's my opinion <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I hear you because, you know, when someone tells you that you need to follow the science, but they're not willing to show you the science that you're supposed to follow then how does that even actually you know compute? yeah and you're supposed to follow it but you can't like when parts of it don't make sense we're not going to show question it, it you're just yeah. like yeah it's like well that yeah that's that's not allowed you know yeah. how dare you question it right yeah. like, okay and... you can't you can't eat inside but you can eat outside yeah and you can go outside and make a temporary structure that feels like inside but since it's a temporary structure it's still technically outside and so then the virus knows outside versus inside and it's like I don't know. So it's like, you know, 
and and what, and what we saw was that a lot of people went on with it initially hmm. and then eventually like they hit a breaking point like i can't keep this is obviously a sham i can't keep doing this and they would hmm. come to me and say thanks for speaking up because i had my suspicions but everyone else i knew was going along with it right but like yeah. guys like you and i well, we are a had our moment of figuring out it was a sham like 10 years prior yeah. so you know it was like i felt an obligation to speak up yeah. because it was like i knew that there was a lot of people who you know deep down inside it, things weren't clicking but they saw everybody else going along with it and they didn't want to rock the boat and so mm. it was like okay well i gotta rock the boat because if i don't speak up to like what about you know everybody else so it's like i'm willing to you know to put you know whatever at risk for me for, for everybody else mm. turned out to be a great move turned out to yeah. be a really good move um <laughs> you know like you know selfishly for my own career but also for you know just helped a lot of people see the light yeah. Um, so it's like, I don't, I'm not, I, I usually am not like that brave or that pioneering, but I kind of knew what was on the line. Like yeah. I, I, I saw the, like, I saw the, just like the kind of like the, what would happen if I didn't speak up and it didn't get more people speaking up. I saw what was down that road and I kind of knew it was like, okay, it's worth it at this point. If I have to like lose my license, if I have to, you know, be financially ruined, if whatever, yeah. It's like that will happen anyway if yeah. this continues. So might as well speak up now, you know, and I'm glad yeah. I did, obviously. But um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of rambling now. I don't know what, the, what we're actually talking about. <laughs> well, I, well, what I want to do. Yeah, I mean, no, that's a really good point because of the, all the fear um, and the fear is is the way that uh, the medical system gets you to comply. And it's not just in terms of, you know, the virus, it's. It's in terms of, you know, even when you go to the doctor with your autoimmune condition, right? Yeah. What I, you know, I, I don't know if you kind of have noticed this, but they always talk about, oh, what if, right? Yeah. Right. If you don't take this, what if this happens? Do you know? Yep. Well, what if it doesn't? <laughs> you know? Well, what if I take it and I get side effect? You know, I mean, we've all seen. What if I get it and it doesn't symptoms. actually solve, doesn't resolve any of my symptoms? What yeah. if it makes me worse? Right? None of that's even discussed. The risk and risk benefit ratio is never discussed. And so, you know, I'd like to know your thoughts about the fear they go. And I'm sure you've seen it. I've seen it with so many of our clients where they go into the doctor and then they'll call you the next day and they're like shaking in their boots because they're so scared that whatever they got, it's going to give them cancer down the line if they don't do some, if they don't take this medication or they're going to get, you know, their bowels going to perforate if they don't take this medication. And then they go through the healing journey and none of that stuff happens and they get better, <laughs> right? Yeah. But like, it's pretty easy to give into the fear because that's how we are as humans. Like if we get scared enough, we'll do things that maybe we don't always want to do. Yeah, they don't really present things. Into, I mean, like there are some doctors who do, but this informed consent process is like dying. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I uh, I have one that's signed on my desk here. I can't show, but I have an informed consent before I work on someone. I sign a piece of paper that says this is what I'm going to do. Okay, yeah. if yeah. you if you go along with it, and here's all the risks and benefits, and luckily there's almost no risks. Um, you know, is this is the thing that you still want? Do you consent to this treatment? Yes or no? Right. Yeah. Um, but they're not doing that. They're basically saying you need to get this, like you're going to die. You're going to, bowels are going to perforate. You're, you know, you're going to like vomit gasoline. I don't know what, what <laughs> we're going to come up with. Right. And it's like, it's like, it's a very, like, you need to do this. I'm in the position of authority. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Right. Hmm. And, um, I remember I was at this, um, so a friend of mine, she runs this, this, um, this expo every year. It's called the, the melanin natural expo. And so it's, it's, geared towards people that are African-American. Okay. And, um, but I, I go and I support and, and, um, you know, she's doing a great thing. So I'm, I'm there and, um, she's given a talk and to these people and she's telling them like, look, when the doctor tells you to do something or get right to a prescription or tells you, you need a procedure, you can say no. It's like, yeah. they're, it's not a demand. They're, they can't force you to do anything. Yeah. It's an offer and you can accept or decline, or you can ask about, other choices or you can go see someone else like you don't have to that like a doctor cannot it like it makes logical sense like obviously a doctor can't force you to do anything but like people literally believe that it's like oh because because doctors are revered in such a high esteem and it's like 
They can tell you what to do. They can force you. They can coerce you. They can make you do things. And they have the power to do that because they're a doctor. Like people, you know, maybe don't like consciously believe that, but like on an unconscious level, they're like, I have to do what they say. They are the authority, right? It's like almost like um, if like a politician came to them or a police officer came to them and said, if you do this, don't do this thing, you're going to get arrested, right? It's, it's <laughs> that same level. Yeah. Um, and it's like, are, are we going on this podcast and say, if you don't eat fruits and vegetables and drink smoothies, you're going to you know, poop your intestines out the rear end and like your colon's going to fall out and you're going to die. And like, no, we're not. We're like, this is awesome. I feel great. Hey, I was doing this and I had this, you know, um, you know, uh, digestive condition. Not only did I feel better, I felt better than what I thought I would feel like. I feel amazing and come along. This is going to be great. Like w- the truth doesn't need coercion, right? Like the, the, the thing that works really well, is just like, it's a party and you're invited. Let's all do it. Yeah. Right? But when you got it doesn't need convincing product, either. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much. I mean, you know, yeah. well, it's bit. some convincing, you know, bit, it's like, yeah. um, but it's, it doesn't take coercion, No, you know, like it takes, it takes some convincing to break people out of like the dogma that they're indoctrinated yeah. into. Um, yeah. but, um, but it's like, you know, it's like the, if this stuff like was really effective and safe, like. It wouldn't be like restricting all your rights and like just like piles and piles and piles of like lies and coercion to get you to do it. Just be lining up for it. You'd be like, this is the best thing ever. (laughs) Well, there was some of that, you know, but. (laughs) But not, not because there was for a percentage of the population, but not for the majority of the population. Majority of the population were coerced in some way. With the peer pressure, whether it was job pressure, especially in Australia, travel pressure, job pressure, peer pressure was more than I'm going to die from this thing. Yeah. Like if it was so deadly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's, it's weird. It's almost like they have to coerce because that like, if not everybody goes along with it, then the sham itself will be revealed. You know, it's like, if you don't take this medication, and you go off and like heal your body without it, then th- this whole charade that I'm doing, you know, whether it's IBD or it's virus or it's cancer or whatever, it's like this whole charade that we're trying to, you know, keep up this whole like facade will just collapse, you know? So there's like that fear. So it's like, I, I think subconsciously that's it. Cause like everybody who comes into their office doesn't get better, but they keep doing it. And they think <laughs> like, just, eventually we'll have a success story where someone has to get worse. <laughs> I remember, um, you know, Dr. Goldhammer, uh, who runs true North was telling me that like he would have, you know, medical doctors come and intern there and just kind of observe and, and just be amazed that like with these chronic diseases, like autoimmune and type two diabetes and heart disease that like, this was the first time they ever saw people actually get better. Like yeah. all they saw was people get worse with the medications and surgeries. Maybe the worst would happen at a little slower of a rate, but they like never saw people get better. Like that was like, like just completely out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Right. So if you show up at your doctor and you're like, you know, and, and I've had people who, you know, had IBD were told they needed to get their colon cut out. And they're yeah. like, I'm going to do this Dr. Ben diet thing and eat, drink my yeah. smoothies and eat watermelon. And they come back yeah. three months later and, and they scan the colon and they're like, well, there must be a mistake at the lab because it's no sign of colitis in this thing. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to scan you again. Scan comes back clear again. And they're like, you know, what's this has got to be. This is like a radical remission. What happened? Yeah. And you're like, oh, no, I was just doing this stuff, and, you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's better. And they're like, what's well, like, uh, no, 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 no. This uh, has to be some radical lucky. coincidence. You just got that or, or the original diagnosis was wrong. How many I've had so many people yeah. go and, and say, oh, no, no, we probably got the diagnosis wrong. You never had it in the first place. Um you know, or, oh, you just got lucky, you know, and they're just well, kind of like it, shut it, the door. It literally never, they never see it. They never see it. Oh, like if, see. if you had only seen like, you know, I don't know, say like blue gemstones your entire life. And then someone shows up and like, look, I got a pink gemstone. You'd be like, that's, <laughs> that's impossible. They're only blue. What? A, this has got to be a, a mistake. You must've painted it, you know? <laughs> It's the same thing. It's just their frame of reference. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, when you've only seen people get worse and worse and worse, 
you get quite cynical and you find it hard to motivate yourself to actually you especially know, when that person gets better not doing what you wanted them to do yeah then you get real you get real combative <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent um all right uh let's move on i mean i think what 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 are your thoughts on where the world needs to go in terms of medical freedom and and not just you know just not just the covid stuff but you know even even just in general like you know chronic illness and biological medication all these kind of stuff where people are getting seriously like frightened into taking pretty poisonous things putting you know chemo drug you know for all these autoimmune conditions it's either a biological drug a chemo drug some kind of really really strong medication that you don't know what that's going to do to your body long term but it's like nowadays i don't know if you're seeing it with your clients but it's almost like the first thing you do is go on biologics rather than the last thing that you do oh yeah immediate yeah well and then what i'm seeing is that a lot of the people that reach out to me for help yeah. Are the people who've been on it for seven years, 10 years, yeah, same, 15 yeah. years, 20 years. They've, you know, they've tried everything and else. And, like, the, yeah. and, and, and it's like, okay, I was on Humira for a while and then that didn't work. And then they switched me to Actemra and then that didn't work for a while. And then, they, you know, and, and it's like this kind of like game. Yeah. And, when, and, and eventually they just kind of go like, what's the end game here? Like, yeah. am I just going to be shuffled from medication, medication the rest of my life? And they're going to work for a while, kind of, and give me yeah. side effects. And like, yeah. like, I don't like, I, I want off of this merry-go-round. Right. Or, or, or a big one is when they try to put them back on a drug they were on 10 years ago and they're like, well, maybe it'll work again. Cause you've been off it for a while. Right. And they're just like, what is, what is this shell game? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think like, um, so yeah, it's like, when is that going to end? And I honestly think that um, it's going to, it's things are going to hit a tipping point. You know, there's people like you, people like I, we're helping other people out there. We're building just sort of like, uh, you know, it's going to become, it's like, we're, you know, we were one in a hundred thousand, one in a million at one point, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and like more people are going to heal more of these testimonials are going to come out. It's become more and more common that people are eating healthier. And eventually it's just going to hit a tipping point where it's like, okay, you know, and like, you know, because these drugs, biological drugs, are, you know, still relatively new, right? So there's yeah. going to be more and more people who are just like, I'm tapping out. I'm doing what Dr. Ben said. I'm going to give yeah. that a shot. Oh, I feel, check it out, everybody, right? Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it's not going to be like a top-down thing where we're going to no. like pick the wrong people out of the government positions and we're going to replace Tony Fauci with, you know, <laughs> some, you know, like – dean ornish or something and like <laughs> you know like it, yeah. that's not going to happen it's never going to be a top-down thing you know the, no no president's going to come on prime minister's going to come on tv and say follow plant-based diet and get off pharmaceuticals not going to happen it's going to be a bottoms-up thing and it's just going to it's going to be a groundswell and, and i think if anything like the, um you know this whole covid thing is like it just it just fueled that fire Right, it accelerated like that process, hasn't it? Up. Yeah, yeah, it accelerated yeah. that process. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, it's like it's kind of like in the, ten years ago, fifteen years ago in the U.S., there was this big push against gay marriage. You know, right. there was this big push, like, and it was like we, we can't let them do it. We got to make a law that says that they can't get. We got to definitely, you know, make it out, make it illegal, right? And then all these people, went, wait, 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 what? Wait, what? Uh, why are we doing that? Yeah. Like I never really thought about this much before, but that's awfully suspect that you're really trying hard to stop it. Yeah. I actually think that would be a good idea. And then everybody fought for it and then it became a law, but the original push was against it. Right. And so now it's like, we got this push for like, you know, a bunch of ridiculous medical procedures and people are going, wait, wait a second. You're going to take away my job and like poison me. And it's like, no, 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 no. Right. Um, And so it's like, it's like the more, it's 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 um it's an interesting phenomenon right so it's like every time like they do a more absurd thing it's like more people wake up yeah and and i always you know 10 years ago i was telling everyone well, the medical system is eventually going to collapse right and yeah, people are going to do I, what i do I agree and like that's right. going to be a thing of it'll take time but the medical system will collapse i i and, knew and that we're going to look happen. back on it think... we're going to look back on it and go why did we do that what were we thinking <laughs> yeah 
Well, here's the thing. I thought the medical system would collapse, but I thought it would be kind of just like a silent implosion where it would just kind of go away. But no, it's like rattling this death whale where it wants to like a, like kamikaze take everybody with it, right? It's like, <laughs> well, if I'm dying, I'm going to kill as many people as I can with me, you know? And so um, I, I wish it hadn't happened like this, but to some degree, it, it was a necessity. Hmm. Um, so, you know, maybe that sounds a little harsh, but like uh, – um, it's like this contrast is what fuels the change, right? Like without yeah. it, there's just no. Like you wouldn't have changed like, if like, you didn't get sick, right? Yeah, it's something, like something had to happen. Wouldn't... Yeah, something yeah. had to happen to you oh. for you to make that change, right? Yeah, and then it's like, and then you re- the system reorganizes at a higher order, just like our bodies did. Well, now mm. the whole like medical system, the whole all these systems in the in the world are are like collapsing, and, and we're having to reorganize at a higher order. So. Um, you know, when, when will it happen? I don't know. What's the time frame? I don't, is it going to be within our lifetime? I mean, ho- I hope so. I think yeah, it's so. a pretty good shot. Maybe not, yeah. but if not, it'll happen eventually. Oh, well, I'm pretty well, hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it has to happen because the truth always comes out, you know? Yeah. Eventually. Um, but, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if it's not in our lifetime, then, then it'll, it'll come out at some point. But, you know, I'd like to think that people like us will be, making a big dent in that process even if it doesn't happen in our in our lifetime i feel like i have you know maybe yeah. i'm maybe i'm a dreamer <laughs> but i feel like i've made it made somewhat of a dent so absolutely you have yeah everyone who's doing this sharing it you know like how many thousands of people have kind of come across even if they haven't made the changes they've come across somebody's work you know your work our work somebody else who's been sharing this message you know true north or mcdougall or dean ornish or esselstein someone like that who's kind of like opened their eyes you know the guys who did game changes or the guys who did what the health you know all that kind of starts to to plant the seed uh and and the more of that stuff that happens the i mean i'm i'm three years into this we're three years in this fiasco i got a call from my dad last night Right. He's like, I watched that died suddenly documentary you texted me, and oh, yeah. it was gross. It yeah. was gross. I, you think there's stuff like that inside of me? Well, anyway, I just want to let you know. I watched the video, and I won't be getting a fourth shot or any more shots. So I just want you to know. Right. Took three years, right? Yeah. <laughs> Took three yeah. years. Yeah. But there we go. There we go. Yeah. It's a win. <laughs> it is, it's a win. Absolutely. Um, just to finish off, I'd like you to give um, – three really important tips that you've learned from your experience that will help people overcome whatever kind of ill health they're facing, especially autoimmune conditions. Um, what are three things they can do right now if they're sitting there going, I want to be healthy, but I haven't really made any positive steps to do that. What What are three things they can do right now? Um, I think number one is realize that it's a long haul. And if they're trying to quick fix it, like that's you know because that's a that's a medical belief that you can just like take yeah. this thing and it'll be quickly fixed like understand yeah. it's a process understand you're going to make mistakes understand you're going to fall off and just you know don't beat yourself up understand that that's just that's just part of the process and i'm sure i mean i definitely made a ton of mistakes in the beginning you know and it's like eventually you know i had to make the same mistake 15 or 20 times before i like really learned from it but eventually figured it out right so 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 stay positive realize it's a long haul and then third would be to like just continue to make it fun you know, yeah. like make it, make it, make it entertaining instead of like being a chore or something you gotta like beat yourself up about. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. All right, well, yeah, I think um covered a a good amount of different ground there. How long did it take you overall? Like from the time you decided to go plant based and make those changes to when you started to feel. And can you just touch a little bit on how, like, you know, because healing is messy sometimes. It's not always like yeah, straight line, you know. I would say when I really went for it, you know, maybe like 80% raw, I think in like six weeks, I, I had gotten like 80, 90% better. And then that last kind of 10 to 20% was, it was a process that probably took like eh, two, three years, you know, um, of like dialing it in. But I mean, I was great at 80%, you know, yeah. I just like, I wanted more, um, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely not linear at all, at all, you know? Yeah, because that's that's something that people don't realize. Like healing happens in waves, and it's there's lots of ups and yeah. downs throughout your project process. And um, if you ex- expect to go on a diet and suddenly 
you know, things are going to get better. Most of the time, it actually gets a little bit worse. Do you find that with some of your clients? Um, sometimes that can happen, and sometimes there can be like backtracking. You know, there can yeah. be a little bit of this, but um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's reorganizing. It's a it's a not a linear process at all. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks so much for joining me. <laughs> I really enjoyed that chat. It's been a while, actually. We've been planning to get you on the on the podcast for a little while. So, uh, oh yeah, this was great, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate everything you're doing. And for everyone who's watching, if you're not following Doctor Ben, go and check him out. Check out his book. Um, and um, there it is. It's up there on the screen now. And, GreatHealthBook.com um, is on there. Yeah. And um, yeah, just um, realize that what's what you're watching here is is going to be the future of how people well it's already the current if you're following it properly but that's what's going to be what actually gives you health you know get your fruits and focus on a mainly raw diet eat your simple starches get lots of sleep and do a bit of exercise and focus on your mental health and drink lots of pure water and uh the good things are going to happen to you over time. And, you know, as, as Ben just mentioned, you know, like the initial healing happened reasonably quickly, but the last little bit, you know, to get them to where you really wanted to be took a little bit longer. So you have to be patient, give it time, be disciplined, and you'll get to where you want to be. Um, now, if you're listening to this on the podcast or watching this on the YouTube channel, please share this with as many people as you can because we need to get this message out there to as many people as possible to let them know there is hope. And they can heal their bodies and they don't have to be chained to the medical system for the rest of their lives. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button for more videos like this and the little bell notification icon to get updates on all our recent uploads. If you haven't liked the video, give it a like because it helps us reach more people. And if you have any questions about anything that uh, Dr. Ben and I have discussed today, there's a comment section down below. Ask away and we'll do our best to answer it. And uh, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, Ben, thank you very much for joining me. It's a real pleasure. All right. Thank you. And for everyone watching, make sure you eat plants and lots of them. Take care.